Hello, I'm Mr. Lineweber, and this is 4.0 Factoring Polynomial Expressions for Math 30-2. Today we're going to be looking at factoring two types of polynomials, uh, greatest common factor and difference of squares type factoring. So I'll explain as we go through these questions here, we're on page 99. Basically the goal here is to always look for a greatest common factor between the terms. So for example, 6x and 18 have a greatest common factor of 6. Um, that's their largest divisor. If you didn't know that, you could use your calculator to help you. The Texas Instruments has a GCD function. You just have to remember to type in the comma after the first number between those brackets, and it will tell you the greatest common divisor. So what you do is you factor the divisor out to the left, and then we want to open up a bracket that has enough room for these two terms to be divided by this greatest common factor. So we're going to have two spaces here for the result after division of these two terms by the greatest common factor. So 6x, when we factor out a 6, we're left with x. And negative 18, when we factor out a 6, we're left with negative 3. For part b, the GCF actually also has a variable in part of it. So when you think of the two numbers that divide 2 and 12, the biggest value that divides both is 2. Now with respect to the x squared and the x, you can only factor out x to the highest power that they both have. So this is x squared and this is x to the 1. So at most, you can only factor out x to the 1. So we're going to factor out 2x. And the result after dividing both terms by 2x will be x minus 6. And these are called the factors of the expanded polynomial. The other type of factoring that you may recall is difference of squares. And in order to do a difference of squares type factoring, you have to make sure that you recognize square numbers. So the square numbers are 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, and etc. So you have to be able to recognize those numbers. So taking a look at this first question, we can see a 4 and a 25, as well as the variable has an even power, and that's going to be necessary. So when we do this type of factoring, we want two factors that come out that look almost identical up to a plus and a minus sign in between them. And so how can we make sure that we follow this process? We're going to be looking at square roots. So the a squared is becoming a and the b squared is becoming b. So we're talking about square roots. So difference of squares factoring, we open up two brackets and we think square roots. What's the square root of 4? 2, 2. The other term involved, or the other uh, part of that term is a squared, so we're going to have to think of the square root of a squared, which is a, a. Then we write 1 plus 1 minus, and it doesn't matter the order that you do that in. This, uh, this one could here could be minus, and this one here could be plus. It doesn't matter the order. Now we're thinking square roots of the second term. That's going to be 5 and 5. Now just to make sure that we've done this correctly, let's undo this process by distributing. Remember that distribution and factoring are inverse processes of each other. So they undo each other. So let's distribute. 2a times 2a gives 4a squared. 2a times positive 5 gives positive 10a. Negative 5 times 2a gives negative 10a. And negative 5 times positive 5 gives negative 25. So you can see that these middle terms are going to cancel as they are a zero pair and we end up simplified with the original question. And notice how the final term here, this minus 25, it's negative because one of the terms is negative and one of the terms is positive in that final step of the distribution. And so that's why we can only do difference of squares. We're not doing any sum of squares, only difference of squares.
So I'm going to leave letter D and letter E for you guys to try on your own. Remember that you can always access my site for the full um, completed notes. I'm just going to quickly talk about letter F and then letter G. With letter F, thing that you have to do first is the GCF, always. Always do that first. Look for a GCF. That's the number one goal here. Always, always, always GCF. So we're going to take out a 2 and a 2 only because this factor doesn't have any x, so I can't remove x. I can only remove a number 2 from each term. So each term gets scaled down by dividing by 2. Now what you'll notice here in this parentheses is another difference of 2 squared. So we're going to have to keep factoring if possible. So you always got to be on the lookout for more factoring. Taking square roots, writing one term as a minus and one term as a plus, and we have the completed factoring. The other thing is that you're going to notice um, on letter G is that it's kind of in the wrong order in terms of the way it's written out. We should always write our polynomials in descending order of powers. So really it should look like this. And then one thing I'm going to note is that lead coefficients, they should be positive um, just as you know, a convention that we all are going to use so that when we simplify things work out nicely. So we're going to factor out a negative one. So that's the goal here. We're going to make our lead coefficient positive. That's what we want. So in order to do that, we factor out a negative one. So what that does is all it does is switch the sign on each term. Now with this negative one on the outside, we see we have the x minus three and the x plus 3. And that's done. Okay, so this idea is continued on here, on number 2 here, which I coined the negative trick. And it's just a convention that we're all going to have to follow so that um, uh, things work out nicely. So I'll do letter C for you. It seems like it's the more difficult one. And so you can see that there's a uh, negative GCF, so negative GCF on the lead coefficient. And remember, the lead coefficient is the term with the highest power. So we look at the highest power term, and if it's got a negative coefficient, then we're going to have to factor out a negative. This is called the negative trick. So... I can see here that the GCF it's going to involve a 3 and a Y because those are the numbers that divide both, the biggest number that divides both terms and that's how many variables uh, are shared between the two terms, just a single Y but we're also going to remember that we're going to factor out a negative 3Y so when we factor out negative 3Y from each term you have to imagine this being divided by negative 3y, and so since they're identical, you're going to be left with a 1, but when you have a positive divided by a negative, you're going to have a negative 1. So basically the sign switches. So this sign has switched from a positive to a negative. Now this original term was negative, so now it should come out positive. Dividing 9 by 3 and y squared by y, you end up with 3y. Now again, this also kind of looks weird because the lead coefficient is not written first. So all we have to do is simply reorder it, just switch the order, that's okay, and now it looks um, more convincing. Uh, the other type of factoring um, that you have to be responsible for later in the course when we do um, equation solving are simple trinomials of the type uh, x squared plus bx plus c and these are a special type where the lead coefficient is 1 so all you have to do in order to factor these polynomials these trinomials is think about what two special numbers are going to multiply to the constant so what numbers multiply to the constant. So I need two special numbers that times to 10, positive, and two special numbers that add to 11, positive. So these two numbers, of course, are 10 and 1. 
And when we do this type of factoring, again, sim similar to the difference of squares, we open up the two brackets. Okay, so what's going to make our x squared? That's going to be an x times an x. And then what's going to make this 10? Well, you have options, like 5 times 2, that could make 10. But then if I put a 5 and a 2 here, and then I start distributing, there's no way I'm going to get to 11. It's just not going to work. So I've got to choose the other factor of 10, and that's going to be, of course, 10 times 1. And then if they're both positive, then you can see that when I distribute everything, x times x gives me the x squared, x times 1, that's 1x, x times 10, that's 10x. When you add those together, you get 11x, and then finally 10 times 1 gives you 10. All right, so I'll just do maybe one more here for you. And now, some of these might not be able to be factored if they can't, that's okay, check my notes on the site. Uh, so here I'll do one with a negative sign. So look like letter F here. So I think are the two special numbers that are going to multiply to 21. So like what multiplies to 21? 7 times 3? Ooh, this is looking good because it's going to get me to 10 somehow. Uh, what, el what else multiplies to 21? 21 times 1, is that going to get us to 10 when we add or subtract? Probably not, so we're not going to go down that route. It's definitely 7 and 3. Now how do we get a positive term to come out? You can see here positive 21 when we multiply, but then I need a negative 10 when we add, so what's going to happen is both of these terms are going to end up negative. Now on the next page here, the last page of this lesson, what you can see here is just the combination of GCF and difference of squares, and that's the first section, so GCF then difference of squares. And for the next question underneath here, it's going to be GCF and then trinomial, simple trinomial factoring.